So we're looking at William Dice's Pegwell Bay, Kent, a recollection of October 5th, 1858. It must be a very specific date. There's a, actually even a comet up mm -hmm. in the sky in the center, which probably um, was a specific event at that Visible moment. Visible on a particular date in 1858. That notion of the particular, of the specific, seems critical throughout the whole canvas. He's painting the cliffs there so carefully and specifically, and really everything in the painting, from the objects in the foreground through the stone in the background, is painted very carefully. Obviously, William Dice has been influenced by the Pre-Raphaelite movement. But there is a kind of specificity and a kind of intricate detail that, mm -hmm. that speaks to it, although the colors are much more subdued, and the subject is a, a more standard image of the seacoast of a resort, right? Yeah, although we don't see a kind of modern life scene of uh, vacationing on the resort in a simple way. We have, a, I think, much more mysterious and disconcerting image of figures who seem strangely isolated from one another across the foreground, a child who looks out and two women who are separately engaged in collecting seashells. These are all, I think, members of the artist's family, and then a woman on the right who heads in yet another direction, with some figures who are also kind of isolated, strewn across the background. And, and, and it's obviously, you know, late in the day, it's low tide, the, the figures are very small in relationship to the landscape. And there's a, a clear sense, I think, of human being's smallness in relationship to nature, our awe and wonder at nature. I think that makes sense, especially with the comet, right? And those grand cliffs and, and the distance of the vista. And in a way, the artist is also using color. I mean, even though the women and the boy are dressed in relatively subdued colors, those are still among the brightest colors in the canvas, and they do stand out as something different and apart, not only from each other, but from the landscape. That's true. The, the landscape exists really apart from them in a kind of timelessness. He seems to be interested in details that seem almost scientific. Mm -hmm. The strata of the cliffs seem to be particularly carefully rendered as if he had been studying <laughs> geology. Yeah, and I, I think there is some sense that Dice was interested in geology and, and just the enormous interest at this time in, in nature and, and science and amateur science. And, and, and think about the women collecting seashells. Right. I mean, they're being collected for their beauty, but also as scientific specimens. And I said there's a sense of timelessness, but there's also a sense of the measuring of time by the strata on the cliffs, by the sun going down. You know, there's a sense of the passage of time. I mean, this almost reads to me as a a memento mori in a way. Maybe reminder of death is too strong. I feel like I have been on holiday with my family in places just like this, doing similar activities. And so it becomes very poignant. I think about Dice himself, the artist on this day with his child, with his family, in this place that removes one from one's everyday life and puts one in touch with something that's more mysterious, whether that mystery is in, in science and nature or whether the mystery is in God. I think that's exactly right, because we have this sense of the specific day, the specific moment, but we also have a sense of the eternal here, of the way in which this scene is encapsulated within this much grander scene of the solar system of the universe. And so our lives here in the year 2010 are in some ways not so different from William Dice's in 1858. We still go on holiday. We go to places like this. We live in a modern, industrial, urban world that we escape from to places like this that take us someplace else. Mm -hmm.